texturing. That's cool. Tell us what it's made of. Very light. It's ABS and styrofoam. Hey guys, we are Jordan and Megan and we are converting a cargo trailer into a tiny home. Join us as we install our water tanks, pipes, and pumps. And test our plumbing. Only to find out... Yeah, we have a leak. Previously on the build series, we frame in our kitchen floor rays, build our 8 foot long storage drawers, which we definitely had fun doing, and we also install our kitchen and hallway subfloor. In this episode, we install our under the floor plumbing for our fixtures and appliances to come. We place our water tanks and fill ports, the main fresh water line, pump, and drain pipe. We also installed the majority of our recirculating shower plumbing and our custom closed loop hot water system. Each of these systems are highly interconnected, which you should see here in a second. We have two fresh water holding tanks. Each can be filled from their own respective fill port. These feed water to the main pump via the main PEX line. The pump then supplies cold water to the sink, washing machine, and a heat exchanger. The heat exchanger will transfer heat from our hot water system. Hot water will then be sent to our sink and washing machine. Any waste from the sink, washing machine, and urine separator will travel through the drain pipe to the gray tank. We plan on having a recirculating shower that will reuse a few gallons of water. Water will flow out of the shower head, down the drain, to the shower pump. The pump will send water through a filtration system, then split to supply cold water to the shower head and through a second heat exchanger. Once heated by our hot water system, we should be able to take a nice, long, hot shower. Our hot water system is unique in that the water flows through a closed loop system. It consists of a hot water tank, two heat exchangers, and a third pump. This is so we can heat two unconnected systems without cross-contamination. The water is heated inside the hot water tank by two heating elements. It is then pulled through the two heat exchangers and pumped back to the hot water tank. Since we did our plumbing simultaneously with our floor rays, you'll see evidence of both in this video and our floor rays video. Never have too many holes in the trailer. <laughs> Since our two 46-gallon fresh water tanks would weigh about 750 pounds when full, we decided to place one on each side of the trailer next to each wheel well over the axles. Once in place, we created a water fill port for the driver's side water tank. We primed and glued the drain pipes for our sink, toilet, and washing machine. After we had the drain pipes installed, we started on our main PEX line. The floorways made access a little difficult, but we were able to work around it. Our hot water system is custom made and is a bit unique. This is a 10 gallon water tank. The water in the hot water system will never be consumed. Got all three holes drilled. The bulkhead fitting for the thermostat, the two holes with their fittings for these heating elements. One at 36 volt, 1200 watt, another at 24 volt, 900 watt. We're doing two because the 36 volts can run directly off of solar panels. The 24 volt will run off our battery if we need to heat water when the sun is not out.
While Jordan prepped the hot water tank with the thermostat and the heating elements, my job was to measure and cut installation pieces in a way that made a box around the hot water tank. Before we taped it together to enclose the tank to keep it hot, Jordan started testing the system. Right now our water temperature is hovering around 66, 67. In the thermal well on here. And then we are going to hook up a solar panel. See what happens. We tried, but one solar panel wasn't quite enough. It doesn't produce enough amperage to heat the water. Once we have all our solar panels installed, we will have more than enough amperage required to get the job done. We continued running PEX at the front of the trailer. We ordered three 24-volt C-flow water pumps one for the sink, one for the recirculating shower, and one for the hot water. How do we want to connect to the water pump? We planned out and installed our first water pump. Our second pump takes water from the 10 gallon hot water tank and pumps it through two heat exchangers. These heat exchangers will transfer heat from the closed loop of the hot water system to the kitchen sink and shower. We added a drain pipe to a water tank to give us the ability to drain the fresh water should we need to. Once we had everything connected, we had to test it. We ran our hose from the house and began by filling the tank on the driver's side. Initially, we kept the valve on the tank closed. This would narrow down where we needed to look for potential leaks. Water testing beginning. It's gonna trap air, so it's not gonna go very far. But if there's any leaks, it'll push the air out, and then we'll see water. Coming around the corner. Under everything. Around the sweep, and all the way. over to the pump, into this valve that's currently closed. Okay, everything looks good. I think we can start filling this tank. Okay. There we go. Once confident that that section was okay, we opened the final valve to allow water to fill the second tank. This is taking way too long, so we added a second fill station and filled the tank from that side. After finding no leaks, our next step was to turn on the first pump. Okay, should only come on and then pressurize as long as we don't have any leaks. <laughs> and then it'll stop. Well, it's not silent. 
Uncapped that valve, so you get that, the behind you the valve. Turn the valve. What the, this? Yes. Yeah. I don't know where it's going, but it's outside. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of, a lot yeah, of pressure yeah. built up yeah. in here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Go ahead and close the valve. This one. It was shooting that way. Well, that's the easiest way to have a problem. Yeah. Valve is off again behind you. Yeah. I'm glad I prepped right. for venting pressure. Right, right. <laughs> Otherwise, that would be our pressure vent. <laughs> Here we go again. Did you kill it? Did it stop? Did it stop. Kick off? Okay. Pressurized and stopped. It's going into this. Coming out that. Trips. Um, and it's going up these. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to read that. No. The pipe's gonna be in the way. Yeah. We realized that installing and maintaining the shower drain was going to be very difficult. The issue is maintenance. We need to access the pipe here. If without this pipe, I could totally throw it. Right. Can you get under that pipe? No? Okay. The solution we came up with was to make the gray tank removable. We cut the PVC and added a fern co. This allowed us to separate the gray tank from the drain pipe. We were relieved to find out that the gray tank could fit through the hatch door. We didn't have room for traditional P-trap, and they usually don't work well in mobile applications. So here's the shower drain. We decided to use a HEPVO self-sealing waste valve. These are low profile and don't require water to seal. Then it comes over to here and goes out that way. As long as we take out the gray water tank, we do have access to unscrew it in case we need to do any maintenance on it. Being able to remove the gray tank was a game changer. That solved everything. The shower pan we purchased is constructed of ABS and is very lightweight. So that is definitely very different than the acrylic stuff as far as construction. Oh cool, that is way lighter than the Which is what we want. acrylic one. So we probably want to put something under here, but we want to support the edges. We may even want to put something under the curb. This curb is definitely weeble wobbly. We built supports around the perimeter and underneath the curb. I'm about to do a little modification with it. One benefit, it's ABS. It's plastic. We can melt stuff to it if we want. Here we go. Okay. Another big milestone in our build. We have running water. Still making that, that gurgling sound, that, like there's not enough. Yeah, it's kind of whole sitting and bubbling. Yeah. Okay. Put my thumb over it to create a restriction. Oh, okay. Like a shower head would. But that seems like decent pressure as far as, as far as like what's hitting the the bucket, you know? Yeah. 
We know this video has a ton of information in it, and we really appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions about something specific, just leave it in the comments below. Want a shower? Please consider subscribing and join us next time as walls start to go up and we start framing the kitchen in our tiny home.